Um, I started writing in October, I guess. We shot in December, and um, we just finished. Wow. I'm going to open the floor up to some of the questions out there. Anyone who has a question, please raise your hand. Uh, gentleman in the block truck. No, you. Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, how much research is involved in, for the technical aspects of writing a script like this, the military? You know, I've, I've been watching military movies all my life, so a lot of it just sort of seeped in. Um, and then when I had specific questions, I would call friends in the Army. I have a friend who actually uh, got me to the uh, National Military Command Center at the Pentagon. And mostly, I, you know, Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to write a project, and then when you, when you get to a point where you need a little input, you look for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, gentleman in the white shirt at the top. Hi there. Um, Hi. So I grew up in Wilmington, and I've been to the battleship many times, and always wanted to tour all the places you couldn't go, or the black, white. Yeah, we, we have free access to... What happened? That actually happened a lot on the ship, too. <laughs> What did 
we shoot on the first day. Um, we shot the stuff with the uh, with the captain uh, out on that little side deck outside the bridge, looking off uh, the, the scene where he gives the order to leave the port. That was shot on the first day. Um, and then the last day was the stuff in the swimming pool. Um, you know what? While, while we're here, why don't we ask some of our local actors to uh, come up and take some of your questions? We'll, uh, we'll do this by order of rank. Elijah Chester, Secretary of the Tenth Council. Sean Smith, First Officer Brian. Sean here. Very good timing. Um, uh, Devin McGee, Lieutenant Commander Juarez. And since uh, we don't want you to be staring only at our ugly mugs, uh, April Liesel Wilson, Dr. Billman. Oh my God, you're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any questions for the cat? All right, now that I brought them up here, you got to ask them. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Elijah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the first time that it, it hit me was when Thunder and we were in the, the read through, and Carl was not there. And I had no idea what the, the piece was going to be about. And I said, Well, you're actually going to have to stand down Carl Weathers. <laughs> and so it was, a, it was an absolute honor to be with him. He's an amazing man, real giving, uh, wonderful to work with, and uh, we actually had a lot of, a lot of fun together. But. <laughs> Yeah, having to stand him down and point at him up like this was kind of fun. <laughs> Devin, how long did the bird makeup take and how enjoyable was it? Uh, the bird makeup. Um, actually, we had a great makeup artist, uh, Bob Garcia. She probably had me done in, let's see, an hour and a half, maybe. She was, yeah. you work quickly on a small budget. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was actually a rough day. Um, we had Devin in the makeup, we were shooting him in the morning. And uh, we had run into our lunch hour and we weren't done yet. And I couldn't imagine making him sit in that makeup all through lunch and then having to fix it. So we, uh, we had to kind of beg the crew to uh, work through lunch. And I think they stuck with us for about an hour so that we could uh, finish and get those scenes so that Devin didn't uh, Young sticky. I once, uh, my last time I did a, a zombie film and we had an actress who was naked and covered in blood and the blood dried and stuck her to the stage. Uh, and we had to fry her off with hair dryers and spatulas and stuff. I, I didn't want that to happen to Devin. So. We have another question for the cast. But um, I actually read for the doctor who was standing beside me. Yeah. And obviously changes were made. <laughs> we, uh, I think April, I, we actually had you read for Captain Winston at one point. Yes. Uh, didn't we have you uh, do this? Dr. Flynn, actually. Dr. Flynn, okay. Yes. I knew we, we, we switched you around a little yeah. bit. I read for Mario's Right. We, 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 uh, we used Mario's uh, confrontation with the Admiral to audition quite a few people just to see if they had the strength. Uh, Mario and Carl, of course, were cast out of, uh, out of the central office. I didn't really even have a hand in that. Um, all the uh, local actors were cast by audition. Uh, Johanna Watts, who played uh, Lieutenant Bradley, I had actually written the part of Dr. Flynn for her because she had been the lead in my previous film. Um, and I saw her as Dr. Flynn. Um, and we sent the audition tapes off to the guys at the asylum, and I had uh, Nikki McCauley, who plays Dr. Flynn, as Lieutenant Bradley, and Johanna as Dr. Flynn. And they said, we think they're both great actresses, but you got to switch them. 
And so both of them already thought they were getting the parts they'd read for. I thought it was going to be that way. And uh, the first day on the set, we had to do a whole lot of uh, readjusting and trying to figure out how to make these uh, parts work. But I think it did. I think they, uh, they worked nicely. Yeah, come on, every, everyone who was in the film, stand up and take a bow. Well, the, the, the asylum has a very uh, specific way they like 
like to work with writers. So you don't actually start writing the script until they've all approved a fairly detailed version of the story. The original story I pitched in three ideas. One was about a ship, uh, an American battleship chasing an invisible North Korean ship. Um, yeah, now I don't remember the other two. But, um, <laughs> but, but there were three stories I pitched, and they chose the chasing the North Korean ship, but they said, don't make it North Koreans, make it some nameless terrorist group. So we started with that. I wrote a whole detailed story. I was ready to start writing the script. And then they said, OK, it's terrific. We have just one little note for you. Make the bad guys aliens. And I uh, said, OK, I you know a writer lives his whole life for a note like that. Um, so I, I rewrote it as aliens. And it actually, it actually ended up making more sense that way, because I was, I was really sort of torturing the material to, to figure out how it was that uh, a North Korean ship could defeat the entire US military. And so aliens actually kind of helped me out. Uh, behind the bar. Uh, was there any creative thought in like the alien animation at all, or was it just whoever, and, designed, whoever came up with the aliens? The, um, the aliens were not my design. The aliens were, um, we went through two or three designs. I had an idea, the effects guys had an idea, um, and then I saw this. And I said, it looks like a giant vagina. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the, the executive producer was in love with this alien, and you know he paid the bill, so that, that's what we did. Um, in, in the last shot where the alien is lying on the deck dying, originally there weren't any teeth. And I said, for God's sake, we've got to put some teeth in there or something, because it really does. <laughs> no, yeah. A certain what? Alien, Halo Reach. I've never played Halo, so yes, it's coincidence. <laughs> um, and in fact, I made sure that I never uh, saw the trailer to Battleship before we shot this, because I didn't want to be influenced by them. By the way, Universal is suing us. I just, I just found that out today. The funny part is that this is going to air on the Sci-Fi Channel on May 19th. Uh, 9 p.m., please. That's your VCR. Your TV. Uh, but Sci-Fi is owned by Universal, so they're essentially suing themselves. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. With the beer, sir. Um, usually it was uh, my downtime with Mario, and I think it was day five on the set, and nobody had asked him about any of his previous work. And we were on a military film, and I said, it's, it's day five, and nobody's asked you about Heartbreak Ridge. And uh, I said, I just, I got one question. In that scene when you're playing guitar and you're moonwalking at the same time, they go from a wide shot, they cut right down your feet, which makes me believe that maybe you didn't moonwalk. Did you moonwalk? He looks at me and goes, you give me a dollar right now, I'll moonwalk. <laughs> so it was little moments like that. Other than that, every morning going to a battleship for work was was fantastic. It was it was cold, it was dark, and you saw the lights as you came over the bridge. It's just, you know, incredible. I, I can't say enough good things about it. In the, in the behind the scenes uh, clip that you'll uh, you'll see if you uh, buy our DVD, um, Sean mentions that we were shooting on December 7th, the anniversary of Pearl Harbor, and um, you know walking out onto the deck of a battleship that day was uh, was actually kind of uh, chilling, moving. And uh, anyone else have a favorite scene you want to share with us? No. Okay. No. <laughs>